Hey folks, it's time your frugal prepper. So what do you do when you come across that seized brake bleeder in a brake caliper? It's probably been messed with, rounded off, and it's about to break off. What's your best chance of being able to get that bleeder out? And so I have a really old rusty crusty one here. Uh, this is a caliper that I actually did replace on a car because it's bad. But uh, I figure I'd take this opportunity to show you how I do it at home in my garage without any super special tools or oxyacetylene torches. Okay, so you're going to want some type of bolt extractors. Uh, these here are Craftsman's from the Sears Craftsman, um, but you can buy these types of extractors, these turbo sockets or twist sockets sometimes they're called. Uh, Irwin makes them, uh, and they're not terribly expensive, and these are an awesome thing to have in your toolbox when you have a rounded off bolt. So I use these. You're also going to need a Ryobi drill, or any kind of drill, something that holds a drill bit. You're going to need a small impact driver. I've been using this DeWalt. I have a Ryobi one. You could use anything, but just a decent little impact driver with a 3 8 adapter, which you can buy a set of three of these at Harbor Freight for a couple bucks. You need a can of the Magic Formula 40 right here uh, for whatever good that really actually does the other thing is you're going to need some small drill bits um, I have a link down below and this is also in my little Amazon uh, store um, where you can get this assortment of different sized ones but you can also buy like 30 or 60 of these in a single size real cheap uh, because you're going to destroy these bits <laughs> one of these bits when you take these out so I always keep a little assortment of these around. The other thing you're going to want is one can of computer duster. Uh, any kind is just fine. So I like to take and lock my caliper in a vise so that it's nice and secure. But you wouldn't have to do this necessarily. The other thing you're going to need is just your uh, basic, you know, propane torch. Nothing special. Just get it at any hardware store with a little tank of propane map gas will work even better because it'll put out a little more heat but I got propane so I'm using it alright so the first thing we're going to do is find a drill bit that almost fits in this opening um, and that does fit it's a little loose so we're going to end up going here with the 1 8 which should be just a little too big and that's what we want it to be just a hair too big and we're going to take and chuck this guy up in the drill and we're just going to drill this right here into the bleeder that's good and then we're just going to take and we're going to flip this guy over you don't want to drill all the way into the caliper so just drill down there until you kind of feel it hit the bottom and then stop so then we'll just tap that in with a little hammer. I guess that's another tool you're going to need. Like so. Once that bottom's out, you just want to break this off. I always like to try to leave a little if I can like this, but that's a little too much. So I'm just going to break off pretty flush. If you can get it to leave a little, it does give you an opportunity to maybe uh, remove that if you need to try a different extraction technique. Uh, this drill bit has two purposes right now. One is when I heat this, it's going to force this bleeder to expand out into the threads rather than expanding into the empty hole where there's less resistance. As it does expand a little bit, it's going to really tighten on this and seize on it, and it's going to make this bleeder one solid chunk of metal so that it's less likely to break off. 
So I go ahead, and you can spray some in the middle before you put the drill bit into, but I just put a little bit of WD-40 on there for what it's worth. Um, I don't really know that it honestly does that much. So the next thing we'll do is we'll just heat this up and just go ahead and heat this up for a good five minutes or something with your torch. Just give it some time. If you had oxyacetylene, you'd only need like 15 seconds. But with propane, and we're not trying to heat around the outside, we're trying to heat the bleeder. Now, if you had something to put out enough heat, you know, something that was putting out 6,000 degrees like oxyacetylene, you could definitely heat the outside up and it would be more effective. But we've got 1800 degrees to work with here. And so our only hope is to heat the bleeder itself and get it to expand in the hole to get some movement in the threads rather than trying to go the other way around. There's just too much of a heat sink here uh, for it to get hot enough. So I'm just gonna let this heat for a few minutes. You'll start to know when it's ready because the flame will start to look green. Okay, so now we're going to get our duster ready, and we're going to go ahead and take our torch away, and you're going to hold your can of duster upside down so that it freezes this thing. This creates a temperature differential, and we want to try to spray around the outside of the bleeder. Okay, so now we're going to take... Uh, the one that fits the best here and we're just going to hammer our turbo socket on like so we're going to take our impact driver set to reverse see this in here and just that did not work we're going to step it up a size this one's really in there usually if it doesn't work after that first attempt then I'll go ahead and heat it again so I'll go ahead and heat it for a couple more minutes here. And then we'll hammer. We got down on the part that somebody messed with. Now we're going to try to get down on this original level of threads down at the bottom here. See what we can do. The other thing that I'll do is just go ahead and hit this with some more WD-40 here. WD-40 isn't real flammable. One of the things I like about it for this type of job more than like a PB blaster or something that's flammable. But we can just kind of keep seeing if we can get that to soak back in the threads by heating. The other thing I'll do is just beat right around there you always want to use the ball side of the hammer on something like this because it puts the most uh, pounds per square inch in the blow. So now I'm just going to leave it hot this time for my second attempt. Let's see if I can hammer this. That, that's just going to be too loose. We're going to have to try this one again. Hit it with the impact. Let's see. Bingo. So the trick there is expansion, contraction, having the drill bit in the center of the bleeder to help strengthen it is a big part of this too. Um, as you can see, these threads are completely dry. None of that WD-40 even uh, made it down in there you know uh, so I don't know that that does much good other than maybe clear up some rust right at the surface uh, but it can't hurt right uh, 
vibration is another way to kind of get some thread movement so if the first attempt doesn't work so well try that just so you don't think this method's a fluke I mean I have uh, very good success with this method <laughs> here's one that's even worse um, it's super crusted in um, I don't even see the middle of it being like open to where I might be able to get something on there it's been filed square at one time or flat somebody put a crescent wrench on stuck back in left the rust I don't see the middle I don't know this will probably be the worst one I've ever attempted to get out with this method. Let's see what happens. I'm going to just put a small drill bit in and see if I can't open up the end of it a little bit to find the hole. Got to find the hole. Okay, now I'm going to go to the next size up drill bit. This is a money saving tip because your other choice is going to be to go and get another caliper at AutoZone if you run into this situation, uh, which gets expensive. So I'll go ahead and spray a little WD 40 down the hole here. There we go. I'll drill it with this bigger bit. There it bottomed out. I'm just going to go ahead and spray a little more WD-40 down here. We're going to take our drill bit, tip it in backwards, and just tap that in. And then we're going to break it off, like so. And now we're going to heat it. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just gonna let this heat for a little while. I'm gonna do a little W40 around the outside. And we'll see what happens. Alright, so we got about as hot as we're gonna be able to get it. So now I'm gonna hit it with the duster upside down. And now I'm gonna hit the bleeder again. <laughs> Heat it up again. This is also where I'm just going to take and whack it with the ball pin hammer a few times. Safety glasses are a really good idea for this job. Chunks of rust are flaking off. It's going to heat it for a couple more minutes and then we'll try it. Maybe hit it a few more times. A little WD 40 for what good that'll do. Hammer on my turbo socket. Slide this in. I'm just going to squeeze a little at first. I don't want to go full big. Bingo! Like I said, this works like 98% of the time. All right, so like I said, that, that method works really, really well for me. Um, I know like Eric O and others, they heat them up with oxic acetylene, maybe hit them with water. Um, I mean, this is probably better than hitting it with water because upside down, it kind of becomes like a liquid freon and freezes it real good. Um, 
but you know whatever you got to do to get that temperature differential to get some movement in the, the threads with the expansion and contraction these little drill bits see the link below or go to my amazon store there's a link to it below uh, with all my like favorite amazon stuff and i make a few pennies on everything you buy um, but uh, the uh, bits i think i've gone down as far as like the 332 seconds up to the 1 8 is normally what i use and you can buy this little assortment, which is 60, or you can buy 60 of the same size, I believe, too, for 10 bucks. Uh, just handy to have on hand for some cheap drill bits that you're going to essentially waste. Or if you have dull ones, uh, or part, ones that they've already broken, but the shank's good. So here's our old bleeders. Now, you do not want to reuse these because they'll probably, if you put these back in and they rust in place again, there might not be any hope of getting them out. I will put a link to these two on Amazon. But Dorman makes this little uh, bleeder assortment kit uh, with all the different sizes of bleeders. Um, but you can buy the individual sizes as well if you know which ones you use end up using more of. Um, you can buy these on Amazon, but they're about the same exact price at your local Advance or Auto Parts or O'Reilly's. Or, I mean AutoZone or O'Reilly's. Um, so they usually carry these assortment kits and the individual sizes. Um, so you can always run up and get these when you need them as well. Um, also, like most of the time, like AutoZone or whatever, they can look up the exact one you need. So you can just buy two of the exact ones you need rather than buying the kit. I like to keep the kits on hand, uh, but put new bleeders on there. Uh, the other thing I do when I put my new bleeder in is I take some of this just Permatex brake lube or Ceramics even better, but I'm out of it right now. And I just coat the threads of this with some of that when I put it in that helps keep it from seizing up because this is really good at not washing away over time and it'll help make it easier for the next person that needs to bleed the brakes. You can do this on the car. There's not really any reason you can't. I prefer to just take the hose off and bring it into the bench vise where I can kind of sit down and work with it. Um, I have done them on the car and if you got to crack the bleeder open anyway might as well take the brake hose off because you're going to bleed the brakes when you're done, right? Um, and you can get all that old nasty brake fluid out of it while you're at it. So, hope this helps somebody else out there from having to go spend $80 on a new caliper when they really could just spend a couple dollars on some new bleeders. And, uh, you know, as far as those extractors, if you don't have those, you can try hammering on a smaller size socket. You can find some generic versions of those at like Rule King and Tractor Supply that might work. I don't know. I always use these. Um, I think these are a good investment. There is a link to these in my Amazon store, these exact Craftsman ones. But they're getting hard to come by now that Sears is kind of closing up and doesn't have any credit to buy anymore. So, um... I think that's it. I'll talk to y'all later. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. Today is Christmas. I'm out playing in the garage. It's what I'd rather do on Christmas. I'll talk to y'all later.